Hey YouTube, Wes here checking in with a brand new episode of The Vinyl Survivor. This is episode number 154. The Vinyl Survivor is the show where I talk about records pulled from my inbox, giving them a listen, let you know what I thought of them, let you know where they're going to be staying in my permanent collection or let you know or whether they're going to be going away. So let's go ahead and get into this episode. A uh, really awesome episode this time. Lots of killer stuff in here, so uh, don't fall asleep. First one we got here is a pop artist from uh, England. This is her debut album from 2016, and that is the artist Lapsley with Long Way Home on XL Records. And yeah, Engl Lapsley is an English art pop artist. Uh, really, really cool. Really dug her vibe. As, as you know, if you follow my channel, I do like this uh, the female pop vocalists a lot. And uh, yeah, she she definitely delivers as far as emotion and and cool cool vibe and, and enjoyable listening. Uh, so yeah, definitely definitely enjoyed hearing this. And this was the Vinyl Me Please release of the album. It did come with an art print as always. And that one's by uh, Jose Mertz. This one had a couple of extras with it. Um, also came with a poster. So there is the poster. I think this might have been the Vinyl Me Please exclusive as well. Nice sort of handwritten note. Not handwritten. Well, handwritten, but not, you know, printed. Not, not handwritten directly. And then the inner sleeve had lyrics as well as a bunch of photos as well. And then finally, the vinyl itself, white pressing, blue labels, really, really nice, matches the album artwork quite well. Uh, so yeah, that's Lapsley's debut album, Long Way Home. Uh, a lot of Vinyl Me Please members really hated this one. I loved it. It was right up my alley, as I said, being female, female pop vocalist. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely dug it, and uh, definitely this one's staying in my collection. So that one survived. All right, next up we have the uh, second album from Ariana Grande titled My Everything, uh, released in 2014. This one's been out longer than I thought. This one had a bunch of hits on it. Really big, really big hit for her. Kind of a breakout album, I guess you could call it. It's got uh, Problem, Break Free, Love Me Harder. There is the gatefold with some, just some liner notes on it. Um, and this was a Hot Topic pressing. I don't know if it was a Hot Topic exclusive, but it was pressed on this sort of very bright purplish kind of vinyl. Uh, really pretty. Definitely dug that. That's the second album by Ariana Grande. She definitely goes a little more uh, electronic pop vocalist here. Her first album was very R&B influenced. Um, she gets compared to Mariah Carey a lot and definitely had a more of a Mariah Carey sound, although this one does too as well. She does do some some sort of R&B type things on here and it definitely has that sort of vibe to it as well, but a little more, little more dancey, electronic, uh, a little more hip hop to it. So it was a good album and definitely an enjoyable album for me. So this one is a keeper, it is staying in my collection. All right, next up, going all the way back to 1984, we have uh, Peter Menger and Michael Weiser with Beamscape. Uh, this duo was also known as the group Software. They do very, very spacey, ambient, electronic music. Um, if you just took out all the, the sort of ambient electronics of, of like Pink Floyd and just put that you know, stripped it down, took out the guitars and the vocals and everything. It's kind of what this sounds like. It has a very electronic, ambient, spacey kind of soundtracky kind of vibe. Definitely something to put on uh, at, in the dark and and close your eyes and just lay down and chill and enjoy enjoy the trip, as I as I like to say. Uh, yeah, really, really killer. This was a this was an excellent, excellent listen. I definitely. Uh, highly recommend this if you find it out in the wild. Um, if you buy it online, I think it goes for a, a decent bit of money, uh, but uh, this is something you might find in a dollar bin somewhere. Definitely highly, highly recommended. This was killer, sort of, if you're into spacey electronic stuff. Uh, yeah, I love this one a lot. Uh, this album was released in Germany on the Innovative Communications label. So there's, the, there's that label. Pretty cool. 
Uh, so yeah, Peter Menger and Michael Weiser, uh, otherwise known as the group Software, with their album Beamscape from 1984. Killer, killer, spacey electronic music. Um, if you've ever listened to the Hearts of Space radio show that used to play on public radio, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's something that would fit right in there. Very, very dreamy spacey electronic kind of stuff so really cool really dug this one it was a it was a cool find and i'm glad i really dug it i definitely love this one definitely staying in my collection so definitely get a get a thumbs up on this one as a keeper and as i said if you find this one for cheap if you find this in the wild it's probably going to be cheap because the people are probably not going to know what they have but if you try to buy this online i mean it's not super expensive but it's not a it's not a five dollar record you know so uh, yeah cool record definitely recommend it if you uh, if you happen to find it all right next up we have the 13th studio album by david bowie titled lodger and i never know exactly how the how the cover on this one is supposed to go um i think maybe it's meant to be like this uh, but yeah the uh 1979 album, the last album in the what is known as the Berlin Trilogy uh, from David Bowie. Uh, probably one of the least loved of the Berlin Trilogy, maybe. Uh, but this one, it's good through and through. It's got, it's, it's very solid. Uh, the Berlin Trilogy, he worked with uh, Brian Eno and definitely has a very Eno-esque sort of sound to it. It's got some world influence. It's got some sort of a, a lot of layering of, of textures and sounds and definitely has a cool feel to it. Uh, and yeah, I, I like this one quite a bit. It's, it's, it's a solid album. It's not, there's no duds on here. It's a really good album just to, to play through and you're not going to hear any big Bowie hits and you're going to hear, but you're going to hear some good Bowie on this one. So yeah, definitely a highly recommended one from, uh, for Bowie there. If you happen to find this one or all these albums have been reissued recently as well. So that's, that's a nice thing. You can pick them up for not too much money. Uh, the originals tend to go for bigger money these days since he's passed and this is on the rca black label so lodger by david bowie yeah i definitely dug it and it was sort of my first experience with this album i hadn't listened to it before i was kind of new to it uh, and i and i really dug it so definitely got a thumbs up for me and definitely staying in my collection all right, next up was a recommendation from Roger Coleman years ago, and I picked it up and really dug it and enjoyed it, and it's been floating around in the inbox for a while and finally got to uh, putting it through the survivor process here. And that is the group Zombie with their album titled Shapeshift. I believe it's from 2016. 2015 was when this was released. Uh, Zombie are a duo... Uh, uh, one person plays synth and the other person does drums so it's it's synth with drums it has a very horror soundtrack kind of feel to it so if you're familiar with like John Carpenter kind of music um, it has sort of that feel to it but with a, a live drum track so it's it's kind of unique in that way uh, very interesting artwork on this one I um, mean the vinyl itself is is pretty incredible one of the things that made me want to want to get this not you know over over and above just how how much i like the music uh, really really killer splatter vinyl on this release here uh, yeah check that check out that splatter that's just killer killer um i should have a i should have a light behind this because uh, the blue part is sort of translucent so you can actually see light shining through like what i'm seeing behind me um it's really really cool i actually did a Instagram post on this a while back and yeah makes makes for some cool makes for some cool photos to shoot the shoot the splatter on that one uh, but yeah just sort of a the best way I can describe it is like John Carpenter horror movie score with, with live drums uh, yeah really really cool really dug it uh, definitely recommend uh, checking them out if you haven't if you're interested in that kind of thing all right, next up, speaking of film scores, I have uh, probably one of my, probably my favorite film score of the last decade, um, if not more, and that is the score to the movie Interstellar done by Hans Zimmer. Yeah, just 
killer, killer uh, score. Definitely has a very ambient feel to it, mixed with a, 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 a church, a big church pipe organ. Very interesting. It's like, it's not like a traditional Hans Zimmer score at all. Really got experimental with this. Uh, he asked like the, the woodwinds to sort of try to make odd sounds with their instruments, not necessarily play notes, but make just sort of interesting sort of blowing noises with their instruments. And he used that as sort of an ambient background, sort of the vacuum of space kind of feel to it. Uh, just, yeah, just an incredible score. I just, I can't, can't say enough good things about how much I love this score. Um, so yeah, definitely had to have this on vinyl, have it on CD as well. Nice sort of fold out poster liner note sort of thing here. Uh, got some photos and liner notes and there's some photos of them uh, recording the score and then some more liner notes on the back. And it's pressed on two LPs on black vinyl. Uh, so yeah, that's the score to Interstellar and as I said, uh, probably my favorite film score of the last decade and uh, yeah, just had to have this on vinyl and love listening to it. It's very awesome, just sort of spacey mixed with cool church organ like sounds and just, uh, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just like if, if somebody asked me how to how to make a perfect film score it would sound like this kind of almost I and mean, maybe add in some electronica in there but yeah this is just awesome definitely definitely glad to have this and absolutely staying in my collection and probably will be one of the last albums i ever get rid of if i ever do get rid of albums all right next up we're moving into some fusion jazz and this is the 1977 album by ecm artist pat metheny titled watercolors uh, definitely some nice uh sort of cool fusion jazz but still really really good really enjoyable i definitely i definitely like this uh, at times it can get a little cheesy sounding um a little too sort of you know, it's, we're right at 77 here. We're getting starting to get into the late 70s, early 80s when fusion jazz got real sort of keyboardy kind of not not good or not as good. Uh, but this one, this one definitely has some good, uh, definitely side one, and then the closer on side two, which is like a 10 minute suite or 10 minute song called Sea Song really really enjoyed that one that one's a little more a little more ambient um, definitely has sort of a a, a, a vibe to uh, not a vibe but sort of a, a a narrative to it it's really cool there's the ecm green label that if you collect ecm records you'll be well familiar with this is a u.s pressing not a german pressing uh, so that's uh pat metheny's watercolors on ecm definitely dug it uh, enjoyed it and it's going to be a keeper for me. I'm staying in my collection. All right, next up, got a little bit of folk music to talk about here. This is on Folkways Records. This is Jack Elliott doing Songs to Grow On, which are songs by Woody Guthrie. So you got Jig Along Home, The Car Song, Swim Swim, you know, Put Your Finger in the Air. Woody Guthrie kid songs, really enjoyable, really brings me back to my childhood, so singing some of these songs and other songs uh, that are like it. This was from 1961, is the release on this one. Done by Ramblin' Jack Elliott. This one does come with the booklet with liner notes in it and of course the lyrics so you can sing along too if you don't know the words. But they're all pretty simple. And then there's that lovely Folkways blue and silver label. Uh, so yeah, nice solid Folkways release. I dug it and it's uh, staying in my collection. That's a keeper for me. All right, next up, moving back into uh, the modern times. And uh, yeah, we're just, we're talking about some pop again, but this is not a female pop artist. And I guess they're gonna put this in the, put this into the queer pop realm. This is Perfume Genius with uh, the album, uh, Put your back into it. I believe this is his second album from 2012 is when this was released. Pretty cool. Definitely a little more, 
a little more going on than his first album. His first album was very stripped down, um, kind of just you know piano and vocals kind of thing. This one has some more effects on it. He's playing playing in the studio a little bit. A lot of people didn't seem to didn't not like that that he did that. But uh, some really good songs on here. Really, uh, still very emotional. Still very much dealing with relationships and you know the how the world deals with with queer people and stuff and things like that. Growing up and all that. Um, insert with lyrics on it. That is on the Matador label. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, Perfume Genius, some good, just some good pop music. If you like, uh, like Bon Iver, you might like this kind of stuff. A little bit sort of experimental pop, male, uh, male vocal kind of stuff. Uh, not, not, not folksy like Bon Iver is, but definitely, you know, kind of experimental like Bon Iver is and very, very emotive and emotional and very lush and chill and uh, really good stuff. So yeah, d definitely like this one. I collect Perfume Genius. So this one is uh, absolutely staying in my collection and enjo enjoyed listening to it. All right. And lastly, we have the third studio album from Julian Lennon titled Mr. Jordan from 1989. Uh, there is the back cover. This is very much a straightforward kind of late 80s pop rock male vocal kind of thing. I, I really had trouble with this one. I couldn't get into it. Um, it just had a very, a very sort of commercial sound that just didn't, didn't strike me at all. Uh, it just sounded like, sounded just kind of like background music to me, unfortunately. So I just, I really didn't dig this one. Uh, it's on the Atlantic label. The final one, the only one that didn't make it in the collection this time, Julian Lennon's Mr. Jordan from 1989. Just too much of an 80s pop rock kind of feel that just felt, it felt generic to me. And I just, I didn't like it personally. No, no offense if, if you like this album, but it just wasn't for me. So that's not staying in the collection. So that does it for this episode of The Vinyl Survivor. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, great night. Please subscribe if you aren't already to be kept up to date with uh, future videos I make. I do a lot of videos here on the channel about vinyl and music and uh, related things. I think you'll enjoy it. Remember, there's no bad music, only music you don't like. Cheers.